How to choose a Linux distribution. First of all, do you really want to switch to Linux? Have you made sure that all the file types, all the programs, all the games that you want to run are compatible with Linux? If they're not, then you might as well just switch to Windows or just wait a little because things do get compatible after a while sometimes. However, if you've made sure that all the programs that you want to use and all the files you want to use and everything is perfectly compatible, let's try to make the leap. The first step is obviously choosing a distro, so let's do that. There are many distros to choose from. These two are really hard to install, Arch and Debian. However, these hard to install distros are the basis of the most popular distros like for example Ubuntu. Ubuntu is based off Debian. Another example is Manjaro. Manjaro is based off Arch. There are also independent Linux distributions, for example Clear Linux or Solus. These ones are based off themselves, they're not based on Debian or Arch. They're completely independent. Because of this, however, compatibility with many popular programs can sometimes be a problem. For example, Solus is completely incompatible with DaVinci Resolve. So which one do you choose? Well, in terms of the independent ones, you can choose Clear Linux if you want the maximum performance out of an Intel or in some cases AMD machine. However, this doesn't mean the performance will be drastically worse on other distros. It's also important to note that, as I mentioned before, Clear Linux is independent which means that compatibility with all programs is a little bit of an issue. It's also fairly new, but Intel seems very determined to get it done. Anyway, if you want to choose Solus, then great. Apparently, it's compatible with many games. Just make sure that your software is compatible. Anyway, now for the big ones, the Debian and Arch-based ones. To understand which one to choose, you have to decide on a philosophy. Arch-based distros and Arch itself is focused on the latest bleeding-edge packages. This is great if you want the latest programs, but but sometimes things can break. However, my experience with Manjaro as my daily driver has told me otherwise. Things are going pretty smooth for me, but that is something to consider. So while Arch is all about the latest and greatest, Debian is about stability and performance. With many Debian-based distros and Debian itself, the focus is on stability. So while things may be a little old, they do work really, really well and have a very low chance of breaking. So yeah, depending on which one you want, you can now choose a distro. With Arch, it's fairly straightforward. Manjaro. Sure, there's also Antargos and Chakra, but Manjaro is the biggest one. It has the biggest community and the most options for desktop environments. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, how your Linux distribution looks has got absolutely nothing to do with which distro you choose. How your distro looks is up to the desktop environment, and with most distros, you can simply change it with just an install command. So yeah, don't worry about having your desktop look this way on one distro and that way on another one you can change it on every distro. So, let's look for the distros that offer stable experiences like Debian. The most popular one is obviously Ubuntu. However, Ubuntu can sometimes be excessively old. The kernel in the latest Ubuntu version at the time of this recording, 20.04, is still the old 5.4 kernel, which means that some things will just be incompatible. So, I'd recommend going with Pop! OS. Pop! OS is based off Ubuntu, but they keep things actually updated and functional. It's focused on gaming and it has excellent support for graphics card Optimus on the weird NVIDIA laptops if you have one. Another option for people who are more familiar with Windows is Linux Mint. It's based off Ubuntu, like Pop! OS, and it offers the Cinnamon desktop interface. As I mentioned before, if you download pretty much any distro, you can always change the desktop environment, but it's nice to have one pre-installed. So yeah, Linux Mint offers a desktop environment that is similar to Windows for users transitioning from Windows to Linux. Another Another great option is Deepin. Deepin, to me, is very beauty and consistency focused. It's not based off Ubuntu, it's simply based off Debian, and it works pretty well. I'd recommend Deepin for people who are transitioning from Mac, because it'll be less of a hit to have clashing applications and... <gasps> different names. Then, for people who are really hardcore about open source and free software, there's PureOS. PureOS is focused on the GPL, free software, open source, and privacy. I'd recommend it for people who have AMD hardware generally because NVIDIA drivers are proprietary or binary. So yeah, this is a very opinionated list of distros I hope you enjoyed. Is there a distro I missed that you want to see? Tell me in the comments. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video, 
video is don't go with Ubuntu, go with Pop OS. Pop OS offers the same stability and all the support from the Ubuntu community, but at the same time, more up to date components and better driver support, all with a little less of that canonical bloat. Another thing that I want you to take away is if you're really focused on the latest software, use Manjaro. That's what I use. I love having all the latest packages. It's based off Arch, is easy to install. Please don't kill me, Arch users, but I use Manjaro. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. This video was surprisingly not sponsored by Hannah Montana Linux, which is arguably the best Linux distro ever made.